built by NVIDIA and Siemens for the next age of industries. Incredible, right guys? <laughs> what do you think? All right, I'll hang on tight, just hang on tight. And so, so this is, you know, if you look at, look at the world's models, there's no question OpenAI is the, the, the leading token generator today. More, to, more op, OpenAI tokens are generated than just about anything else. The second largest group, the second largest is probably open models. And my guess is that over time, because there are so many companies, so many researchers, so many different types of domains and modalities, that open source models will be by far the largest. Let's talk about somebody really special. You guys want to do that? Let's talk about Vera Rubin. Vera Rubin, yeah, go ahead. She's an American astronomer. She was the first to observe. She noticed that the tails of the galaxies were moving about as fast as the center of the galaxies. Well, I know it makes no sense. It makes no sense. Newtonian physics would say, just like the solar system, the planets further away from the sun is circulating, circul circ circling the sun slower than the planets closer to the sun. And therefore, it makes no sense that this happens unless there's invisible bodies, we call them, she discovered dark body, dark matter, um, that occupy space even though we don't see it. And so Vera Rubin is the person that we named our next computer after. Isn't that a good idea? I know. Okay, Vera Rubin is designed to address this fundamental challenge that we have. The amount of computation necessary for AI is skyrocketing. The demand for NVIDIA GPUs is skyrocketing. It's skyrocketing because models are increasing by a factor of 10, an order of a magnitude every single year. And not to mention, as I mentioned, O1's introduction was an inflection point for AI. Instead of a one-shot answer, inference is now a thinking process. And in order to teach the AI how to think, reinforcement learning and very significant computation was introduced into post-training. It wasn't no long, it's no longer supervised fine tuning or otherwise known as imitation learning or supervision training. You now have reinforcement learning, essentially the computer trial, trying different iterations itself, learning how to perform a task. The amount of computation for pre-training, pre for post-training, for test time scaling has exploded as a result of that. And now every single inference that we do instead of just one shot, the number of tokens you can just see the AIs think, which we appreciate, the longer it thinks, oftentimes it produces a better answer. And so test time scaling causes the number of tokens to be generated increase by 5x every single year. Not to mention, meanwhile, the race is on for AI. Everybody's trying to get to the next level. Everybody's trying to get to the next frontier. And every time they get to the next frontier, the last generation AI tokens the cost starts to, starts to decline, about a factor of 10x every year. The 10x decline every year is actually telling you something different. It's saying that the race is so intense. Everybody's trying to get to the next level and somebody is getting to the next level. And so therefore, all of it is a computing problem. The faster you compute, the sooner you can get to the next level of the next frontier. All of these things are simultaneously happening at the same time. And so we decided, that we have to advance the state of the art of computation every single year, not one year left behind. And now we've been shipping GB200s a year and a half ago. Right now we're in full scale manufacturing of GB300. And if Vera Rubin is going to be in time for this year, it must be in production by now. And so today I can tell you that Vera Rubin is in full production. You guys want to take a look at Vera Rubin? All right, come on. Play it, please. Vera Rubin arrives just in time for the next frontier of AI. This is the story of how we built it. The architecture, a system of six chips, engineered to work as one, born from extreme co-design. 
It begins with Vera, a custom-designed CPU, double the performance of the previous generation, and the Rubin GPU. Vera and Rubin are co-designed from the start to bi-directionally and coherently share data faster and with lower latency. Then, 17,000 components come together on a Vera Rubin compute board. High-speed robots place components with micron precision before the Vera CPU and two Rubin GPUs complete the assembly. Capable of delivering 100 petaflops of AI, five times that of its predecessor. AI needs data, fast. Connect X9 delivers 1.6 terabits per second of scale out bandwidth to each GPU. Bluefield 4 DPU offloads storage and security, so compute stays fully focused on AI. The Vera Rubin compute tray, completely redesigned with no cables, hoses, or fans, featuring a Bluefield 4 DPU, eight Connect X9 NICs, two Vera CPUs, and four Rubin GPUs. The compute building block of the Vera Rubin AI supercomputer. Next, the sixth generation MV-Link switch. Moving more data than the global internet, connecting 18 compute nodes, scaling up to 72 Rubin GPUs, operating as one. Then, Spectrum X Ethernet Photonics. The world's first Ethernet switch with 512 lanes and 200 gigabit capable co-packaged optics scale out thousands of racks into an AI factory. 15,000 engineer years since design began, the first Vera Rubin MVL72 rack comes online. Six breakthrough chips, 18 compute trays, nine MV-Link switch trays, 220 trillion transistors, weighing nearly two tons, one giant leap to the next frontier of AI. Ruben is here. What do you guys think? This is a Ruben pod, 1152 GPUs and 16 racks. Each one of the racks, as you know, has a 72 Vera Rubin, or 72 Rubens. Each one of the Rubens is two actual GPU dies connected together. I'm gonna to show, show it to you. But there are several things that, well, I'll tell you later. I can't tell you everything right away. Well, we designed six different chips. First of all, we have a rule inside our company, and it's a good rule. No new generation should have more than one or two chips change. But the problem is this. As you can see, we were describing the total number of transistors in each one of the chips that were being described, and we know 